Thank you for flying Air Audible. Please, put on your headphones and relax as we begin our ethereal journey through the worlds of fiction. Our first destination today takes you beyond the wall. Then, if you look to your left, you'll see the planet Mars. Get a galactic tan. After our brief stop in Gilead, our next stop is your own. Be it the mythical world of Hogwarts or ancient Greece, there are limitless possibilities. Wherever it is, we'll get you there in style. The difference is audible. The program is rated TV MA NSFW OMFG GAF TTV BYGAS. Guys, what do my backdrop look like? Is, is it my position right? Because I can never quite fucking tell. You look great. You look yeah, you look great. Yeah, you're centered. Yeah, you look great. Yeah. Background looks good. We just got to, we're going to wait for the other host to come in. We're getting another host. Oh, this will be good, Gabe. Just just wait. I, I don't know what it is, but. Candace? Candace. Candace. Can this dick fit in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Gabe, and fuck you, Jake. I don't know why I'm laughing. It's so fucking stupid. Dude, it's so bad, Potter. It's so bad. Coming to you live. We're live. In front of an audience from around the world, where we talk about fighters, fighting, and events. Welcome to Fight World Live, where you can hear about the latest in the world of combat sports. Get ready to gear up and square up, because we are going live, live, live. And now, broadcasting live. We will broadcast live. This is Fight World Live. Boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Fight World Live on Amazon Prime. I'm David Potter, the big dick bandit of all combat sports, followed by and co hosting with four time, four time, four time world champion, owner of one of the best gyms on the fucking planet, Mr. Gabe. Gabe, how you doing, my brother? I'm well. I'm doing very good. Just sitting in the office. Very nice, very nice. And what happened to your mustache? You're sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened to the food, man? Chew. I saw that. Well, I, 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 I swear to you, I went to a, 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 a local fight on Saturday, and someone said, "Oh, you're trying to pull off the Chuck Liddell," and that was. Oh. Like, you know, I have to say, like, I'm not trying to emulate anybody, and I'm certainly not. I, I like, look, Chuck is a bad dude, but like, I certainly don't want to look like this. And yeah. that's all someone had to say the next day. It was like, zip, zip, done. <laughs> In the case, back on. And we're also joined at one point in time, considering one of the best fighters in the world, one of the best fighters in the game, coming back from the UFC Apex, and I'm coming just thinking about it. Thunder, Jake. Hi, Jake. How you doing, my brother? Doing good, man. Glad to be back. Sorry I missed last week. I, I know Gabe doesn't. Gabe doesn't care, but I care. I care. So I care. I think Gabe well, I would care, care more than you care, Potter. Care, it's really more than Potter does. Yep. Why are you guys ganging up on me? Because you're kind of a prick. Yeah. True. So we're gonna get right into it, and we're in this bitch like an unborn baby. And are you guys ready for five topics? All right, let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to five topics. 
Okay, double number one. One. Ooh, this weekend it was UFC 306 and Canelo fight. Uh, both took place, one at T-Mobile Arena, which is obviously the Canelo fight, and one took place at the Sphere. Gabe, what say you? Thoughts and takeaways from both events. Canelo versus UFC 306. What would you think? What were your thoughts, Gabe? I don't know. I was at a local fight in California. I didn't pay attention to either one. Are you fucking shitting me, man? You didn't order. You didn't watch any of the highlights with any single fight that happened this weekend. God, I love Gabe. I read about it. I read about it. I, right, so I, what, uh, what'd you read? Just for talking points, Gabe. What did you read? Uh, I read that Canelo decimated the other guy. Uh, I heard that uh, Marab beat uh, O'Malley, and I also I heard that right. like the scorecards were a little off. That that it was it made it seem a little more uh, uh, competitive than it actually was. I don't know because again I didn't watch the fight, but I heard that Marab took him down consistently every round pretty easily. Um, uh, Slavenko uh, uh, took her title back. And uh, Lopez, uh, that was actually pretty impressive. Uh, beat uh, 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 Ortega. And you know, Marab landed six consecutive hard fought kisses in order to ride it out to a decision game. I heard about the kissing. Hey, stop that. Hey, hey. Did you see Irene Aldana? Mm. Holy I shit! That. It, it was, might have been the bloodiest female fight I one of the bloodiest fights I've ever seen, regardless. But it was wow. Yeah. What was the buzz around town? Who was? What was uh, the general consensus? Who? What was more exciting to you? And what was uh, your thoughts about both events? The the sphere by far. Boxing, Christ, and even Dana said it in his press conference. They the only thing they've updated in the last thirty years to make it better or a little more exciting is high def. Which it wasn't really there, you know. They're doing it's just new equipment, so it's just the same same stuff of boxing. And there wasn't much buzz around the Canelo fight. I mean, obviously, you know, there are a lot of Mexicans in for you know Mexican Independence Day, so there was a little bit of buzz there. But there wasn't the normal buzz for the Canelo fight because Canelo ducked David Benavides. You know, he 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 fought a guy that he clearly was clearly outclassed nobody thought it was going to be close and it was exactly what you thought it was going to be and my thoughts my thoughts uh the canelo fight obviously was underwhelming to say the least and by the way by the way congratulations to the big dick bandit himself because the canelo buys the return on the buys and we thought canelo was going to absolutely crush and decimate the ufc 306 pay-per-view seven hundred and fifty thousand buys that's what they're predicting for the canelo fight Guess how many viewers I had on my watch party? 765,000! I beat a Canelo fight! Bow down, nerds! Bow down to me! The Big Dick Bandit! I beat a Canelo fight! Both of you nerds! Slow clap! Slow, slow clap for Potter! Check, check. One, two, three. So, it's a lot of watch going on there. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Last time I saw you was 2013, and I said, please have a good day. And you said, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> now this guy's telling me what to do already. <laughs> hey, one more question for both of you guys. If Give her off the mic. Give her off the mic. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. Guys, what's going on, Miami? This question is for Vitor Belford. You've been through every single inception of the UFC. Uh, your first fight was 1996. Your first fight in the UFC was 1997. Every single inception. Uh, what is the next level, or where does the UFC go? You've been through. Uh, you've been fighting win at the very beginning. What's the next step in the evolution of mixed martial arts? Uh, I think UFC is doing everything better than anybody. You know, they're doing a very good job. They're creating the landscape. 
I think I can see UFC become like the NFL. Uh, the introduction to the UFC to Las Vegas and the reintroduction to the UFC to pay-per-view happened. Both of you guys fought on this card, UFC 33 victory in Vegas. Uh, 22 later, years later, did you even fathom that the sport would be the biggest sport it is today and that you guys set the stones and the building blocks to build the sport to what it is today? Well, I always thought it would get here, but I, I thought it'd take a lot longer. I mean, I think the explosion from having the, the reality show really on, on the fighter, uh, really, we blew up a lot faster. I mean, we went from me being able to walk into a, a room and go, yeah, that guy probably knows who I am, and that guy, and that guy. Your entire career is a Rolodex of classic matches and fights. My favorite fight of yours is Car you versus Carlo Uno, but if you were going to show a casual fan um, one of your fights to introduce him to the sport, what fight would it be? You know, if it was, man, the one thing is I would show, oh man, there's a few I would say, but obviously Uno because winning the belt, that's a big one. Alfie Alcarez because that was the first time we were actually gonna, we both agreed to fight at 150, we were gonna weigh in 155 pounds, we fought at 170, and that's even how we introduced the idea of getting ready to fight the little now, guys, Alfie's you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you that's, he, we were both in the middle. Yeah, so we were in the middle and we agreed to fight. I think we agreed to fight. He was a 18 pounder in college. Yeah, he was at Nebraska, uh, right? Uh, Alfie Alcarest. Yeah, he was at, he was at Nebraska, I think. Oh, yeah, he was a beast, man. Yeah, and so. Who is your favorite person to trash talk to besides the universally beloved Tito Ortiz? Yeah, Tito's fun. Um, let's see, the trash talk too. I don't know, I, probably the Anderson Silva build up. I, and I can't really remember why looking back, like I had legitimately convinced myself that I didn't like him and he was a bad guy and I, I can't remember at all why I thought that. He never did anything to me before or since, but at that time, I felt like I was right in that situation. Game, what advice would you give to the up and coming fighters that want to self-promote themselves, sell a fight, but also be authentic as well. What was that to me? Uh, that was to you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, all right. So, one of the general rules is you give the audience what they want, but you never give them what they're expecting. You, you've got to come up with a code as well. And some guys forget that, like you have to, a hero has to fiercely adhere to his code. It doesn't have to be societies and the norms and the laws and the policies. It has to be his code. So you have to establish it. It takes some courage. It takes a little bit of time. And I would just tell guys not to try to be the next uh, Conor McGregor. I think Israel Adesanya is wildly entertained. I think Rampage Jackson got uh, left out of it sometimes. I would tell them not to try to uh, copy those guys or be the next Conor by example, but to be the first themselves, and I, I know that's a little bit cliche, but it, there's a lot of truth to it, right? There's a lot of angles out there. And you don't the rock boys in the building tonight. Hey. Oh, what a feeling I'm feeling like. Hey. Thanks to the lanes, niggas with bad aim. Thanks to it. So can you see the positive? Cut the onions. <laughs> You're okay, man. We all love you. Um. Do you see the positives as far as what you have done as far as your championship brain? You fought top tier talent. You broke box office records. You did amazing things. Can we see the positives as far as your championship brain? As far as like everything you have done so far? Yeah, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I mean, even in this, I think most people would probably be really down on himself, especially you lose to a guy like that who freaking six nine tattoos and shit like that. You're just like <laughs> How the hell? But uh, glass half full, man. Life is good. It could always be worse. There's someone out there who's complaining about things that I have that they don't have. And I think that helps me keep things in perspective that it can. Someone else out there always has it worse than we do. And I think that's the fortunate thing. Like, you guys are all in here doing something that you enjoy doing, I hope. And uh, being able to go to. Thank you. Um, so your greatness cannot be understated, and especially in like kickboxing, comparing you to like Ernesto Hoos and the great like Jerome Banner, MMA, the next Anderson Silva. But right now you are the first Israel Adesanya. Amen. Uh, you know, again, greatness cannot be understated. What is left to accomplish for you, considering that you're now the world champion, you're considered already one of the greatest of all time? What's left to accomplish? There's a lot in this game. For me, it's just just doing what I'm doing, beat everyone up in my way. I never really chase these accolades or these, um, you know, records or whatever. I just put a guy in front of me, we knock him down, you know, um, and everything else follows. I said it before, I said it again. Jeff, what did I call the belt when I first got to the UFC? 
exactly. I've always said it's a fancy tiara you just wear. All I wanted to do was beat the best in the world, and I've been doing that. And this came, the money came, fuck, everybody came. Yeah. Gotcha. And one more question. Personal assessment on anime. Ah! Rumble, young man, rumble. I shook up the world! I wrestled with an alligator! I made stone bleed! <laughs> Handcuff lightning! I with a whale! Handcuff lightning! Thunder and jail! Yeah! <laughs> ah! Rumble, young man, rumble! <laughs> Man, I got you, man. You're a good-looking guy, bro. You only want to dress up these fucking losers. I like to move me and stop. Yeah, I fucking go, man. We're there at Pride One. You're one of the legends of the sport. Your family built the building blocks of this sport. But one of them is the legendary Helio Gracie. If he was still alive today, what would he say about the evolution of the sport from the days that he was fighting in the ring? In reality, it's amazing to see how the sport went. I had the privilege. I'm 56 right now. So I had the privilege to know the first generations of Gracies, the one that begin the Jiu-Jitsu in Brazil, to the young ones born now. My grandson is seven. The other day he looked at me and he goes, I say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you want to be a cop? Do you want to be a firefighter? He goes, no, I want to be a fighter. A very good one. I go, like grandpa. He goes, were you really good? Otherwise I'll be better. So those were the best words I ever heard in my life. You know, uh, for the upcoming female MMA fighters, um, you know, you already been through the process. What advice would you give them? Just get as much as they can from every fight, every moment, from every exposure. And uh, I was, I always give a lot, and I take as much as I can. But I wish I was this smart uh, as I am today. Five years ago, or when I was the champion, I would make even more money, I would do more, but that time I felt like I was doing, you know, enough. Hey, congratulations on the win and welcome back to New York. Uh, you fought three times here. Uh, the last time you were here, uh, 2018 with a win. Uh, what makes this win so special and coming back to uh, New York City and Madison Square Garden? Uh, I love this city. I don't know why, but this city is, is magical. Uh Awesome. And you can play every sport with one ball, but MMA takes two. And thank you very much for always being in the cage and displaying your guts. Yes, sir. Five thanks. fights that you had so far in the UFC, five-star classics. Uh, is it hard to see the positives right now of what you have accomplished thus far in the UFC concerning, you know, you haven't won the championship? Or is it easy to see the positives and also see the negatives and work on the negatives? Yeah, no, it's not hard to see. Honestly, I, I'm, I mean, I'm 36 years old now. Um, I've been through a lot. And I will continue to move forward with complete disregard to my previous failures, my future opposition, and anything that stands in my way. I've gotten to the point now where, man, I'm just living the dream. This is my second career. I have one career outside the UFC, and now I have a new career inside the UFC, and I am absolutely living the dream. Absolutely. And awesome. enjoying it. Awesome. And you can play every sport with one ball, but MMA takes two. And thank you very much for always being in the cage and displaying your guts. Yes, sir. Thank you. Or any weapons that you add to your arsenal or anything in particular that you worked on? Uh, I actually had got lazy with the wrestling. You know, I was like, oh, cool, I got a little better. Let's quit fucking doing it. Uh, so, no, Jamar proved otherwise. So now I'm just trying to see if I can wrestle at a faster pace. I can still wrestle at the same pace I was wrestling at before that fight. Now I just got to see if I can wrestle at a faster pace because he was really, really quick with his shot. So, you know, got to get a little better in the wrestling department over and over and over again. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations on five incredible careers and all that you contributed to the UFC. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you guys have provided so many iconic moments. Uh, Mark Holman winning the 2000 World Grand Prix, being in the corner with Kevin Randleman, one of the greats of all time. Curtis Blaze beating Overeem Hunt. Uh, Fred Mir breaking uh, Tim Sylvia's arm and the two fights between Daniel Cormier and Stipe. But what would you say is the most iconic moment of your careers? Mark, can we start with you? The most iconic moment of your Hall of Fame mixed martial arts career. Uh, it's really tight. Um, the UFC being the first UFC heavyweight champion, that's as big as it gets. But um, uh, losing three fights in a row and having pretty much the whole world tell me I'm an old turd at 32. And then being able to come back and, and and win the Pride Grand Prix, um, I think uh, 
my emotions after that spoke for itself. It was, shut the fuck up. I'll tell you what I'm. <laughs>on your UFC Mount Rushmore? I think GSP's, if John Jones. GSP, I was, how does Dan and I, like he's met, he's talked about John Jones 9,000 times. I think, I don't think GSP's lost a fight that he didn't win back. I mean, then he goes up in weight, he beats Bisping like towards in the twilight of his career mm -hmm. after being off for, for so long. That's like, he's gotta be up there. It's hard, but the different generations, Khabib on there, Anderson Silva, even Wyman. Like a lot of guys, they don't just bow out at the, you know, like when they're Matthews. on top. I have Ronda on that Mount Rushmore. Just because of, like, for me, like, what she did for the sport. I was actually at the fight when Holly Holm knocked her oh, out. Oh, wow. And that's when I fell in love with uh, Joanna young Jetrick. That was the first oh, time I, yeah. I saw her. I was like, <laughs> Chael Sonnen said that O'Malley's, like, the number one guy, like, promotion-wise with the with the UFC. I'm like, Herrera's the guy. Like, oh, that yeah. guy, I don't think O'Malley, I don't know, Aljo said his his numbers weren't great when he fought him, and I don't know if people are too into him. The UFC's more into him than the fans. He's, like, he's, he's cringe on, he's on, cringe. Cringe on yeah. social media. Yeah. Like, I, you know what's funny? Like, I wanted to like him, and I liked him before Like I was following him on social media and stuff. Yeah. And like, you know, it's cool that he sits there, he smokes joints, he smokes blunts. I'm like, oh, I could be boys with this guy, but yeah. at the same time, I'm like, I don't even know if I want to hang out with him. Yeah. <laughs> Aljo, Marab, those guys have really had to work for their title shots. O'Malley, they wins one fight, a split decision against Peter Yan, and they set him up for yeah. the title shot after Aljo has a tough fight. They announce it like that night. Marab's going to have to get his hands on him. I think O'Malley's just going to be running, running, running. He's, he's just playing defense, not get, not letting Marab get his hands on him. And he's going to be trying to land that shot. Yeah, that, Marab's that step back. Tough. Marab's tough. I don't see him getting hit, hopefully, but if even if he does, He's a warrior. He's got hit by a couple guys in his last couple fights, and he's been able to push through it. And he just loves fighting. Like I just, like you see, like when he got caught, he's like, yeah. and Dana, Dana, <laughs> Dana, yeah. shit all over him. Yeah. Dana doesn't realize marab has been doing that since I met him. If everybody was like Marab, the world would be so much of a better place, and the UFC would be freaking Korea. He's got a tough fight ahead of him, but it, he's uh, this is what he's worked for. I think it's gonna all come together. You see Henry has uh, Marab taking this fight, too. Cejudo oh, took, he, took Marab, he, yeah. Nice. What got you into oh, like the real estate nine years ago? Uriah Faber was my coach on The Ultimate Fighter. He was always like, you're going to win some money fighting? Take that money, invest it in real estate. I saw what he did. I went out and trained with him in Sacramento, and he owned a whole block. But he'd rent them out to his fighters. <laughs> Neighbors just were feeling like, safe, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I saw that, and I was like, this is the coolest thing. I went out there, trained with them. And he was, he definitely kind of like took me under his wing in a lot of ways and showed me what, what that whole thing was about. When I got hurt, I was like, I had nothing to do. I was like, I crutched my way into the real estate off, uh, test that got my license and, and then uh, ended up going back to fighting, but always like kind of had a, lo a lot of interest in it. 
you guys ready for topic number three? Oh my god, here we go. Topic number three. Okay, topic number three, the sphere experience. Is it the greatest sporting event ever? Jake, you run Exclusive Vegas. You've been around in Vegas for quite some time. Jake, what say you, good sir? Is it the greatest experience ever? Yes. Uh, UFC is, people don't realize it, it is It is about fighting, but it's built on entertainment. Fighting is built on entertainment. So people still want to see an entertaining fight. You know, look at Connor. That fucking guy hasn't won a fight in, what, six years? And people are still lined up because he's made a superstar of it. So, so it's it's built on entertainment. So what the sphere did is it was a once in a lifetime. I imagine they will go back at some time, maybe for next year. Or I mean, it was incredibly expensive and it was groundbreaking what what they did. But it was it was a once in a lifetime event. The only the only knock on it is the fights didn't they gambled on the co-main event and the main event. And they just were five round, eh, not not so much. So if the fight card would have been like UFC 309 or some of these, uh, uh, you know, some of these other big cards we've seen, it would have blown everything out of the water. But you know, just being a once in a while, I think UFC spent 19 million dollars just on the production, and it it showed. I mean, wait, wait, it, are you fucking serious? 19 million dollars? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, they worked on this for months. They had full videos. They had breakdowns of the Mexican uh, history of the Mexican fighters, and they did these little – it was really it was really something special. So, But the fights lacked a little bit, but as far as the full experience, man, I loved it. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was saying earlier, I, I didn't watch it. I didn't see it, but I watched uh, – I had like maybe seven or eight friends that were there. And just the, the just the small like you know ten second videos looked amazing. Looked, I mean, absolutely, just the way it was set up, everything about it. I mean, and again, like I didn't know about the seats, I didn't know about the wind, I didn't know anything about that. But as far as visually, I was insanely impressed just visually. Welcome. So, are you guys ready for topic number four? All right, let's go. Topic number four. four. Topic number four. Oh, my goodness. We're never going to leave this topic. And uh, Conor McGregor strikes again. I'm gay. I'm a lesbian. I am actually pansexual. I am transgender. I'm half black from the belly button down. Oh. Yeah! Oh, fuck. So you're headed home with a hot girl at the end of your date. You finally get back to the apartment, and then she says this. Because if you pull out like you always do pull out, may Ooh. God have mercy on your soul. Genuine question. Butt or boobs? Proper 12! How to ask a girl out, never say, we should hang out sometime. Instead, say this. Suck these big artist balls! <laughs> Stop flexing your muscles, Jordan. You look like a fucking imbecile. <laughs> Topic number four. Michael Chandler said he's moving on. Conor McGregor, is he finished? Gabe, wake the fuck up. What say you, good sir? What? What are we talking about? Conor McGregor. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll go to sleep. I'm going to go back to bed. I don't give a fuck. Come I'm on. Here. What's the is the question about what's the question about? My, my, so, Michael Michael Chandler said fuck it, and yeah. he he said that he said that the Connor fight's still on, but he'll have to wait till after he fights Charles Oliveira. So now he's fighting Charles Oliveira next. I, I knew that, and, I, and I, I didn't really care about that fight to be honest. I mean, look. Chandler is a is is a dog and he always puts on good fights, but Lasa Oliveira 
and if he loses again, it just means, you know. It, it, but like, uh, it, it, the question was about Connor, though, right? Correct. I don't give a fuck. I really like I. I, <laughs> I, 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 I if I never see the guy again, it, like it, it would not affect my life one way or the other. It's just like that. There, there are certain characters, and that's what he's. He's a fucking character. He's not a fighter. He's a character that if they disappeared, it would not. I, I I actually it would prefer I would prefer it. There there are certain characters that I if they just disappeared, it would it would only affect my life in a positive way because I would never have to talk about them again. And Connor happens to be one of those people. Are you sure though? Because uh, you know, he showed up at BKFC at the the press conference all coked to the gills and kind of like like freaking out and stuff. I mean, well, I think no, coke- wait, no, nobody gives a fuck about BKFC, number one. Nobody I care about BKFC. What the fuck? Hardly anybody about? watches it. If he shows up coked up to a UFC, now we're talking because it's yeah. our world. I, now, I now, now we're in our world. Yeah, like, BK, BK, wait, 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 wait. No, no, fuck, 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 fuck off you guys. Okay. What, what, it's not fun. It's so, not fun. Wait, what, what, what's this hatred with uh, BKFC, Jake? No, BKFC. no hatred. No hatred, but it just doesn't move the needle. BKFC yeah, yeah. doesn't. It just doesn't move the needle. It just and you could have said the same fucking shit when UFC first came into town. You when UFC was first bought by Zufa. Okay, what's the ceiling with the UFC and what's the ceiling with BKFC? BKFC has a fucking audience considering that's a mix of mixed martial arts considering you can clinch, you do clinch work, dirty boxing. So it's a mix of, um, it's a perfect what's, blend what's, of martial arts and also the- boxing too. And it's a smaller fucking ring. So there's more action. There's more knockouts. It will appeal to the casual viewer more than fucking anything. No, it does not. It's too it absolutely bloody. Fucking it's does. too bloody. You can't take it mainstream. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to see... Nine times out of ten, and listen, I, I I enjoy it, I appreciate it, but as as far as for the casual fan, it, it's kind of like slap boxing. You, you, you might. What is the five fingers? Say to the face. <laughs> what? Slap. Oh, whoa. Bang, bang. I'm a dance, bitch. I would like to see one knockout, but watching a whole fight, bare fisted of a guy just just bloodying up and just lacerating him everywhere it's just a bloody mess and that's why they're probably never going to see big mainstream sponsors they're never going to get i mean they're not i'd be utterly shocked if they're making money because the amount that they're paying out and i know what production costs and i know what fighter pay is i mean it's most of these most of these organizations are losing money they're, Listen, they're so- hey, what okay first and foremost our girlfriends bleed profusely once a month and we still love them number two Number two, fuck you. Number three, everybody loves and the audience and the audience is continuously growing with BKFC. So I, you know, it's growing a fan base and with Conor show me, show me, show me the nothing pay-per-view. Look good. Show me the pay-per-view numbers from the very first couple to now. Yeah, I, I couldn't show you the fucking pay-per-view numbers because they're because they hide them because they stuck. No, no, they're not stuck. They're growing their pay. No, I will I ask what the their top. subscriber base is. I guarantee you I their subscriber top. base is continuously growing. And they're growing. What are they growing it with? They're growing it with ex-UFC fighters. They're not growing homegrown talent. Oh. Not- oh. Ferreira. Team Ferreira. They're growing have, with uh, You have plenty of talent that they built up. Kai Thank Stewart. You. Absolutely, sold out that that bitch when he was in Montana. Okay, yeah, and, oh, 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 I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, Montana's really moving the needle. You know, yeah. the big Montana. Sugar Sean O'Malley's from uh, from Montana, motherfucker. Oh, no. Where is he now? And he where is he at now? He lost to Marab. That's it. That was like his one only loss, except to the fucking uh, whatever his name is. From the other guy he lost to your mama. It was that his only loss, it. except the other guy he lost to. Shut up, Potter. You no, know, shut the fuck up. Fuck you. Connor, Connor, listen, I'm I'm with Gabe. I mean, we usually uh, agree. It's he's just to the point where he's just trolling, and it's just old. It used to be kind of funny and cute. Now it's just, it just people don't like him. People don't. He, there's there's heels and there's good guys in wrestling, and you got to pick one to be a character. You get fighters like Matt Hughes or Tim Silva or Josh Koscheck. You're just an asshole, and people just don't like you. You know, there's there's no good or bad. There's no there's no character like Colby Covington. If you are not showering after the bar, what are you doing? Greetings, nerds and birds. Perfect villain. People hate him, but he moves the needle. But but Connor, he's just turning into an asshole, and he's just irrelevant. He's all coked up, and he he costs him the UFC money. He's killing. You know, fans are getting tired of it. 
And he's fucking with other fighters' futures, which is really – that's the problem that I have. I agree with that. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, so Ch – but Chandler did – Chandler's not, not dumb because – he did. He took a bunch of media things. He's doing wrestling promos. He's on all these shows doing. So he got a lot of media out of it. So Chandler got what he wanted out of it. Almost what he wanted out of it besides the payday. But people are just tired of Connor. Just go away. You're not you're you're irrelevant at this point. I think coked up Connor still has some uh, some fuel in that tank. Hey, coked and up I, Connor. We like coked up Connor. If we love coked, coked up Connor. Coked up, then we'll and I think we've all been around the block once or twice, and I'm I'm going fucking sober and fucking you know I'm a, I'm uh, going to be sober or sober Sally over here. But nevertheless, I think C coked up Connor still has some gas miles. Yeah, yeah! Whatever you want to call it, that's what Conor McGregor seems to be on these days. Yeah, yeah! Yeah, look at the guy's completely turning into a caricature of himself, almost like a cartoon villain version of Dana White. Sturgis, South Dakota, for rally week, baby! What's more badass than bare knuckle and American rock and roll? Nothing, baby, that's what. KFC 63! At the Sturgis Buffalo Chip at Sturgis, South Dakota. I mean, with the kind of lifestyle he leads, it's not hard to imagine how drugs and alcohol would be readily available to him at all times. You know, I would, I'm blessed to have entered into the movie alongside him. He was patient with me. He gave me guidance, and I just took it, you know? We had a good rapport on set. He has 75 movies made. I have 75 bar fights made. And that's it, we had a good back and forth. Hi, Connor. I'm Claire Gallagher with The Daily Texan. Um, what can you tell us about your acting debut? Obviously, it's your first experience. Hard work, hard work, but you know, we got it done. It's in the bank for life. You know, you put something in the bank, something that maybe it's not going to be there for life. You might spend it. This baby is in there for life, and I'm ecstatic about that. Thank beautiful you. name. Meredith, Thank you so what a much. name. Thank you That's so such much. a beautiful name. What's your second name? Cassidy. Meredith, Meredith Cassidy. Cassidy. That's a beautiful name. Nice to meet you, Meredith. Thank you so much. Uh, when you got out of your vehicle, the crowd erupted. Do you want to go to war, man, yeah? Do you want to go to fucking war? Something has definitely changed with him over the last few years. It's like he's a completely different person from the fighter who took the world by storm in 2015. Okay, Henry, this one's for you, my man. Some of the things, oh my God, you blew my feet. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, right? So you were here like this, right? And you were doing this, and I was like, you were doing this little thing, and I was like, what the fuck is that? I've never seen that like This guy is a fucking genius, yeah? So you were doing this really well, yeah? If you had just done it this way, Man, you're a fucking clean shopper, bro! You're the fucking took it, you're the took it to the cleaners, my man! <laughs> I, la I landed one punch. Once. And, and he hit me with a door. <laughs> Other than that, it was absolutely perfect. <laughs> That's true. An amazing stunt, a stunt team, Gareth Warden and Steve Brown. And they were phenomenal with us. They gave us free reign. And we've done a good job. After the Samito Sterling fight, and you said. <laughs> What happened? Absolutely nothing. I don't know. I just, I just showed up and I don't know. Just, I don't even know the guy to just, be honest with you. Just rumors. Just rumors. Nothing happened with me. You know, I don't even know the guy. I don't know anything about him. Blast! Have a blast! Have a blast! If you want, have a yeah. Ah. Hell you what, it's from so this is willpower, yeah? Oh yeah, I'm impressed. Why should we celebrate for this, yeah? <laughs> the thing's winking at me. <laughs> Look at the cream on top of that. You need a, you need the spoon. No, no, no. Canelo, no f***ing problem, yeah? No problem. shake, no How problem. you What? You and Carl Frost. Ah, do pop 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 Ah, uh, brother, you're all right. You're a nice, friendly guy to me. I don't feel, I don't feel like ripping you to shreds. Oh, come on, Connor. I grab your front of your head and the back of your head, and I just do that, and you'll be done.
Be outside the fire house, yeah. I, I, wait tomorrow morning. Wait till tomorrow morning. You're looking for that. They collect. I'm expecting on the attack and the rrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Uh, two-time national champion. A two-time national champion. And you own one of the best gyms on the planet, Kajaja MMA and Fitness, located in beautiful Tarzana, California, and train with a four-time world champion in your first classes for free. Gabe, final words and final thoughts from the four-time world champion, if you will. I'm just psyched that we hit number one. That's uh, something we can always try to retain. And I, you know what? I was a three-time world champion. <laughs> I've said this no, so many times. Nice. Okay, yeah, I was four. four. I mean, four-time I guess, world champion. I guess if you added one of the other titles I got, I would be a four-time champion. So, yeah, sure, why not? But, uh, and also, Jake Thunder had at one point in time considered one of the best fighters in the world. And even though we landed on the number one spot of Amazon, I'm number one in his heart. Final words and final thoughts from Jake Hatton. Uh, man, I'm uh, I'm really excited we hit number one. That's a huge, huge accomplishment. There's thousands of podcasts starting every single day. So to to and especially in a you know a little bit of a saturated market, we kind of came in and doing something a little unique. Got a good chemistry, and man, I'm uh, they're just very very happy. Yep, and just like a blind chicken porno, nobody saw it coming. Oh, love is king.